And what differentiates one ERP from the next? Is that the right question? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, I Wait, think oh, I didn't prepare for this interview. <laughs> that makes two of us. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's uh, there's quite a few different factors. Um, it could be integrations, as an example. So like we recently came out with uh, integrations with a few POS companies, and so what that allows for is vertical retailers that they can be pushing their data from their uh, cultivation, manufacturing, distribution up to their store. So for example, you might have um, your product catalog would be held within Distro. So you'd have uh, you know, your media around it, your certificates of analysis, all of those different types of things. And so when you sell that to your own retail store, there's typically a gap between the POS and the ERP. And during that, then you now have to be intaking all of that information again, as opposed to with our platform, you're pushing all of that information. So uh, the product, the pictures, uh, the marketing information, all of those different types of things would be coming with it. So when did you guys start in the industry? with Jared Angel, who uh, I just met, and uh, I grabbed to join us on the podcast because I wanted to learn more about what he does, and he was starting to talk like technical stuff, which I was like, this would be really informative for our audience as to how this works in general. A very interesting guy, uh, but how are you doing? I'm doing well, thank H you. How are you finding Benzinga? Uh, it's awesome. What, is this your first Benzinga? No, uh, this is my fifth? since uh, 2022. Oh, you're a Benzinga junkie. I am indeed, I am indeed. So how long have you been involved in the cannabis industry? Uh, I've been around since 2018. 2018, and you're, you're, you're USC, you're getting an MBA or something you said? That's correct, yeah. Pretty cool, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you, I appreciate it. Graduate in a month, can't wait. If I had an MBA, I'd probably be making more money in this industry. <laughs> I don't know, it's been 12 years, I've made enough money to survive, I'm good to go, but uh, you know, I've, 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 actually, you know, that's not my problem. I've been part of a lot of deals, where I just introduce people and I forget to get my little percentage. You know That's what I'm exactly right. I know exactly how that feels. It's okay. They all remember me fondly. And most people in the cannabis industry like me. So I got a, I got a good like that. But tell us about what you do. Because I was listening to you and I was like, I was like, this is good for our audience. Talk about your, what your project is and your company. Sure, absolutely. Um, so Distro is a cannabis ERP. It's for cultivators, manufacturers, and distributors. Um, and to oversimplify it, it's just the, the hub of how people run their business. So we integrate with uh, track and trace systems like Metric, um, mm -hmm. as well as uh, accounting systems like QuickBooks or Sage or Xero. Um, and so all of the cannabis and non-cannabis inventory uh, that companies are using, we track all of that. Uh, the purchasing of it, uh, the manufacturing of it, production calendar, uh, going into once it's finished, you have all of your uh, finished goods inventory, selling that to uh, you know different retail stores, um, tracking cost of goods sold, lots of, lots of different things. So. And what differentiates one ERP from the next? Is that the right question? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, I think oh, I didn't prepare for this interview. <laughs> that makes two of us. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's uh, there's quite a few different factors. Um, it could be integrations, as an example. So like we recently came out with uh, integrations with a few POS companies, and so what that allows for is vertical retailers that they can be pushing their data from their uh, cultivation, manufacturing, distribution up to their store. So for example, you might have um, your product catalog would be held within Distro. So you'd have uh, you know, your media around it, your certificates of analysis, all of those different types of things. And so when you sell that to your own retail store, there's typically a gap between the POS and the ERP. And during that, then you now have to be intaking all of that information again as opposed to with our platform, you're pushing all of that information. So uh, the product, the pictures, uh, the marketing information, all of those different types of things would be coming with it. So when did you guys start in the industry? When does this company start? Uh, it's been around since like 2017-ish. Right, and what were people doing before this trip? You know, that's a great question. Um, so I can only speak to my own experience. Uh, so I actually, I had a manufacturing distribution company in San Diego for three and a half years. Um, and when I was there before Metric, uh, we were using QuickBooks and spreadsheets. That's okay. it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, that's what I do. <laughs> that's what I would do. Yeah. I'd actually probably like put little drawings on walls and stuff like a caveman. That's my style. Yeah. We caught this many cattle. 
Go hunt that many deer. Exactly. Yeah, that and uh, whiteboards were also the other main tracking of things. Yes, yep. that's too modern for me. <laughs> I'm, I'm a caveman. I'm trying to get things back to the village mentality because this is fascinating stuff. And for those people involved in modern business, they need to know a guy like you. Yeah. I just want to be on a mountaintop somewhere. So y'all, y'all, <laughs> y'all leave me alone. You guys are going to create the Matrix. It's going to be like the Borg one day. I get it. I get it. That's where it's going. Y'all want that. Catch me up here on my mountaintop. <laughs> that's, that's my little philosophy in life. But tell us more about Distro. Yeah. Um, man, let's see. Where to start? Um, well, you started in 2017. Mm-hmm. How and why did it start? Who started it? Uh, yeah, so uh, Blaine, Haytab, uh, Johnny G, and Azam Khan were the, uh, are the founders. Yeah. Um, they're both still they're all around in our business. They're still very active. So, um, yeah, I think the point of starting the software was there's a need in the cannabis industry for people to be tracking their inventory on something that's cannabis specific. Right. Um, so, yeah, that's, you know, that's the, the, the origination of Distro. Um, and uh, how many, so I was going to ask specific, like, what are retailers using? But let's get into retailers and the connection, the overlap there in a second. But how many, how, what's you guys' reach? All the states, all the countries? Yeah, um, at this point, we're only in the U.S., um, and we're in all of the metric states. Um, we're working on a BioTrack integration right now. Ooh. Um, and we still have plenty of customers in BioTrack states. It just means that they have to do some double data entry. Okay, so, but you like you said, you're 300, 400 clients and stuff. Mm-hmm. See Mr. Guns over there? His last name really is Guns. Yeah, I know Raymond. <laughs> Listen, you know Raymond? <laughs> yeah. I like Raymond. He's yeah, he's cool. a good guy. Uh, so you said you're in uh, 300 some stores, or I mean, uh, yeah. Well, our customers, yeah, customers. we've got roughly 300 ish customers, 300, 400. And so almost all those customers are manufacturers, manufacturing centers, uh, cultivators, manufacturers, distributors. Yeah. So a retailer wouldn't use your product. Correct. That's where POS providers would come in. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm trying to understand the integration between the POS and your service. Could you explain that a little bit more? Sure. Um, so uh, let's say that we're business partners. I run cultivation, manufacturing, and distribution. You run the retail store. So your uh, point of sale, which would be like Trees, Blaze, Dutchie, Flow Hub, Kova, Grow Flow. There's a, a lot of different POS Any other providers. ones you want to mention? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I missed Meadow. There, I'm sure there are a few other ones in there too. What's your favorite? Um, I, I don't have a favorite. Oh, we're, we're agnostic. Okay. I, okay. I love all of our partners equally. All right. So yeah trick you there <laughs> but that's how we find out what's the best is because he knows so you can call him and ask him that that's true i'll uh, answer I, yeah in private uh but go ahead your integration yeah so um on the on the retail side um any of the ones that i just mentioned any of those pos providers um when i would bring product to your store you would then have to intake all of that product key in each of the different products that you just purchased uh what you bought it for um, you need the certificate of analysis associated with it, the THC percentage. So instead of having one of your intake staff do all of that, we would actually be sending you all of the data through district. So instead of your intake staff doing any data entry, it's all just magically in your POS. Ooh, that sounds nice. Yes, it's very See, helpful. I couldn't do that because then I wouldn't know what was there. <laughs> I'm like that guy, you know. You got to count every unit. Yeah, I got to see it. Yeah, I got to just, I'm, I'm like that, I'm antiquated. But this is the future. This is awesome. So what uh, you guys are, are you thinking about doing things internationally as well or? Um, maybe one day. I think uh, the international markets need to open up quite a bit more. There's got to be a lot more volume going on there. What's next expansion wise to you guys? When you guys do business development, are you just trying to grab more places or what? Yeah, great What's question. Focus. Yeah. Um, hey, what just, the hell are you doing in Benzinga? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, honestly, cultivators, manufacturers, and distributors throughout the U.S. Yeah. Um, that's really our bread and butter. And what do you guys do in Benzinga? Yeah. Um, lots of things. Uh, meeting with partners, trying to get some new business. Um, yeah. Yeah, I like. I like. We like coming to Benzinga because there's all kinds of thought leaders. There's all kinds of. Uh, owners of different enterprises, existing companies, startups. There's people who are offering capital. There's people who are looking for capital. There's all kinds of stuff. And it's, it's just an important place to come network. Yep. You know, they've really curated a great, great, great community here. Um, so why would you get your master's degree at USC? Um, yeah, so uh, 
wanted to uh, really pursue strategy, leadership, and management. Yeah. Um, so like I'd said, uh, I had a company in San Diego that I was running for a few years. Um, and after moving into the software world, uh, really determined that you know strategy, leadership, and management were things that I wanted to focus on. Um, and so my fiance is actually in school right now at USC getting her full-time MBA, um, so, uh, or part-time. So she's, uh, her program's three years. We moved up there about a year into her program. That's when I decided to go back to school for an executive MBA, which focused on strategy, leadership, and management, which I'm interested in. Um, and now we graduate together in a month. Interesting, well, that's fantastic. One of the things I was gonna, I mean, we were over here chatting and I'm like, no, you, you gotta introduce yourself to our audience. We're thinking about doing a manufacturing brand hub experience at MJ BizCon. Okay. Uh, Mita is where Mita hosts us and we connect manufacturers with brands that are looking to, mo to migrate within this intrastate supply chain model that mm -hmm. exists currently. And that's uh, probably gonna exist for another five, 10 years. And brands that wanna establish themselves more are doing that. Do um, you think it's a good idea? Yes, I do. I think that there's a lot of people um, that See, This is going to go that. live after, in the next two weeks, we're meeting with MJ BizCon to okay. finalize this. And I think they should say yes. Yeah. But for a lot of, we're increasing the value of their exhibit hall and their real estate, and we're increasing the number of attendees, the brands that come meet the manufacturers. Nobody's really done a conference like this, mm -hmm. and it really should be a component of MJ BizCon or MJ Impact or one of these shows. Uh, because there's a lot of manufacturers looking to meet brands, a lot of brands looking to meet manufacturers kind of thing. Yeah. But so that's my little thing. I wanted to get, you, I was going to, when in our conversation, I was going to say, hey, what do you think about this? You think it's needed? What do you think of this idea? Yeah. Um, no, I think it's very much needed. Um, it's something that I kind of do for our customers anyway, is if someone, if I hear one of our customers say, hey, I'm a gummy brand in uh, Oklahoma and Missouri and a few other states. I'm looking to get into the Northeast. I say, hey, let me give a couple of our customers a call. And then uh, in this example, I introduced them to a couple people in uh, Maine, Maryland, and uh, New York. How many uh, manufacturing centers do you work with? Like white labeling centers kind of that will take anyone? I'm not sure. I'd have to, I'd have to really go and get yeah. into the data. You should help me. I mean, we'll see what happens. I've, I'm working with MJ BizCon people. I always throw out great ideas for free to whoever, and uh, we'll see what comes to this one, comes to fruition. But your company should definitely be involved because you could somehow tie the whole, interweave the whole project together. Yeah, I was gonna say, I would love to be involved with that. I think we could probably provide you guys a decent amount of manufacturers and honestly brands too, because there's a lot yeah. of, there's a lot of our customers that are brands in one or two states and they're trying to expand quickly and rather than going and getting all of the capital to go and buy a license and start a business and all of that, they can just go and license their brand out and go through a co-packer like you're describing. So yeah, I think we could probably help on both ends for you. I'm gonna invite you onto the Google Meet call when we finalize the details with MJ BizCon. I'm serious, bro, yeah. I'm a open book. I don't give a shit. To me, yeah. it's all about all these humans need to experience life and find their way, so why not help them? Yeah. You know, so, I mean, we'll be fine no matter what. We always end up with sponsors and members and stuff. Because we're Mita, we just help people. Yeah. And Mita Unshackled is here to educate people. And so we have these conversations, very transparent. We're having it over there. Now we're having it online. And let's figure out how we can work together and see if we can do something great with MC yeah. BizCon. That sounds wonderful. I'd sounds, love to. It sounds like a like pavilion, manufacturers, you know, one from each state. Yep. Kind of thing for yeah. now. But I, I was telling MC BizCon, I'm like, you do one from each state. Next year, you can auction off that spot. 100%. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And we're like increasing the value of their real estate. So in the next two weeks, if they don't do, if they don't say yes, I think we should do it on our own during Cannabis Week. Yeah, yeah, I'd be interested so in doing that. You and I could do it. Sure, sure. No? Yeah, I think um, one thing to consider as well is that there's, um, there might be co-packers that specialize in edibles or pre-rolls, but I'm a beverage brand. Right. Well, the one that you just brought, I can't do anything with. So you might want to consider instead of one per state, it's like one per state per category mm. kind of thing. Yeah. And look, maybe you got two people there, they both make pre-rolls, fine. But I'm sure that you can uh, minimize the overlap a bit. Yeah, but you see the number of people and the interest and how that will work. You see my vision, right? Yeah, 100%. I love it. I love this band. <laughs> I brought them on here to validate my vision. This will be released probably about the first week of May. And uh, we will know by then whether or not we're going to execute this vision to MJ BizCon. Sweet. And, and if we don't, you know, it, it just it would be a shame. But I'm all about bringing people together and helping people find their way. And when I see a need, I try to make it happen. And I think this would be a great vision. Our, you know, this is kind of the stuff that happens at Benzinga. And thanks to Meet Unshackled, it happens in recorded format. And you can learn, too. So thank you for joining yeah, us. It was a pleasure meeting you. I'll see you. I'll, we will keep talking. And this has been another good episode of... Uh, 
Pete Unshackle, that Benzinga. Pleasure meeting you. Yeah, you as well, Dimitri.